Hey guys, Byron here for day three in Tampa, the second day of joint practices between the Bucks and the Titans, and third day of my attendance to Bucks practices all around. I uh, guess let's just dive in with the Super Bowl champions, and here are my takeaways is that this offense has taken it to another level. Uh, they've hit another gear this camp. I was fortunate to be out here last year, so pretty good reference point for where this offense is at, and I think uh, my main takeaway is that this Bucks offense is very likely to have an epic and historic season this year, meaning I think there's enough fantasy production to go around to make just about all these guys a decent play if you could get them at value in your draft. Upside may be capped uh, a little bit, but um, you know, specifically, I think Tom Brady is the main beneficiary here. I think we should completely throw his age out the window. I don't even think it's relevant. It doesn't even look like it's a factor out here. Tom Brady looks incredible. I know newsflash, that's you know not a very aggressive take, but Brady looks unbelievable. And if you think about it, what does he have at stake at this point? What is he playing for? I think he's playing for his legacy. I'm expecting an MVP, historic type statistical season out of Tom Brady this year. Um, it should be one of the very best offenses he's ever played in. And, um, you know, I think we should definitely be getting some Tom Brady in our drafts. It's going to be a monster, monster year. And any concerns we would have about this would only be age related. And I'm just not seeing any of that show up out here. The guy looks unbelievable and uh, on a different level. So Tom Brady, I think we should be very focused on making sure that we get a solid amount of exposure to him in our fantasy drafts. And I kind of think as we kind of go position by position, let's talk about the wide receivers. The word around here is that Mike Evans has been the star of training camp. And I've seen Mike Evans a lot over the years. I'd have to say this has probably been his most impressive performance. He is a dominant force of nature out there. He's an alpha male who looks like as a Super Bowl champion, his confidence at the next level. And the main thing is Mike Evans is healthy. That's not usually the case this time of year. Uh, the guy is is otherworldly. He's having a, a monster, monster camp, Mike Evans. Um, Chris Godwin, a great, great practice today. He really put on a show. I mean, he's a stud as well. And uh, Tom Brady's you know, chemistry with him is, is quite good. I think if I'm looking at the top of the draft, just based on what I'm seeing and what I've heard, you know, my preference would be if I'm going to go Bucks wide receiver early is just to do I think the safe thing and go with Mike Evans there. But to be fair, Chris Godwin at value is still a very solid pick, a very solid pick, even if the upside is limited. Um, if you end up with Chris Godwin in your draft, I don't think there's any reason to have any remorse there. And then Antonio Brown, you know, maybe not separating at will on every play and a few more drops than you'd like to see. But, uh, that guy is so crafty and he's having a great camp and he's making a lot of plays and it's clear that his integration in the offense is to the next level. He's going to be on the field an awful lot. Uh, he and Tom Brady have a special connection. I mean, those guys hug each other when they see on the field and Brady's constantly in his ear. Antonio Brown did get in a little bit of a fight with the opposing defensive back today. Chris Jackson, number 35 from the Tennessee uh, Titans, uh, you know, he, you know, A.B. was a little frustrated, I think, because Jackson had some pretty tight coverage on him and kind of locked him up on that particular play. But I think what you see is A.B. is still an absolute dog. He's out here first guy at practice. Uh, he is constantly learning and working on the field. And just you could tell he's got a very serious demeanor about football. And yesterday he stayed long after practice catching many, many footballs on the jugs machine when nobody else would. So. You know, I think he's got that Jerry Rice kind of football DNA, and that's what Tom Brady probably admires about him so much. And the fact is, he looks awesome. Byron Leftwich told me that he thinks Antonio Brown is still capable of putting up a season like we've seen in the past. So I think my point is, <clears throat> excuse me, Antonio Brown going to be a very, very nice play this year. So being the fact that you could draft him so late in your fantasy drafts uh, really stands out to me. I think he's a guy that pr probably presents – the most value or tremendous value from this uh, Bucks offensive uh, offering in terms of fantasy, and that's Antonio Brown. And of course, again, you know, you're going to say, well, how can all these guys perform in this offense? 
true. It might be hard on a week to week basis to know exactly who's going to get the action, but I think you could be confident on starting any of these guys on a week to week basis and not feel bad about it. And there's a really good chance that they could pan out. And again, most of these arrows point back to Brady. This all means that Brady should, it stands to logic, he should have an absolute monster. And if he does, there could be plenty uh, to go around. And, you know, if we're going to talk about value, which we were talking about with Antonio Brown, I think that value certainly now exists with Giovanni Bernard, who looks excellent out here. He's an excellent fit. He looks like a great player still. Uh, he's having an amazing camp. He's really been a standout from my three days here in Tampa. And, you know, Ronald Jones, Leonard Fournette continue to drop the ball. They continue to run shitty routes. When they get the ball in their hands, they're just not as quick and as explosive up the field. I think Gio has a real chance, especially in a Tom Brady offense, that kind of veteran connection, to become a pretty significant player here much sooner than later. I'm starting to think we need to get Giovanni Bernard late in our drafts while his ADP is still basically in the basement. It's a really nice value. You might not start them every week, but certainly an interesting and probably solid flex play to have deep on your bench uh, late in your drafts. And then, uh, you know, in terms of the other running backs, I think Leonard Fournette's definitely the starter. Still offers more versatility than uh, Ronald Jones. And Ronald Jones is kind of the downhill between the tackles bruiser. I think he could be the closer in the games that the Bucks get way out in front, but I also think Ronald Jones could be the player that's most game script dependent out of this backfield. If it's a competitive game or a game where somehow the Bucks fall behind, that may come at the sacrifice of Ronald Jones' role. So I, I think what we see is Fournette's going to come out every week as the ceremonial starter, have a chance to earn the hot hand, <clears throat> kind of you know technically be the lead guy for a very good Bucks offense, and Gio Bernard just a burgeoning role and a perfect fit and just a different kind of animal in this offense. I think has a clear path to a lot of time, probably on a weekly basis in this offense. Uh, so that's the way that I see the running backs and certainly OJ Howard definitely getting worked back uh, by the Bucks into the mix. Clearly he is going to be uh, on the field for the Bucks much sooner than later this year. He looks, I'd say, halfway decent out there. He's moving pretty well and really stood out to me having seen Gronk at training camp last year that Gronk looks a lot better this year at training camp than he did last year. He's making a lot of plays. I think he's still going to be an important part of the offense. So once again, the takeaway is just how many legitimate weapons that Tom Brady has this season. Uh, I will be shocked if he doesn't have one of one of his very best seasons ever statistically. And this team should also continue to be uh, very, very good. Uh, when we go to the other side on the Tennessee Titans, uh, I guess the biggest thing that stands out to me is Nobody knows what's going on with A.J. Brown or Julio Jones. This kind of uh, raised the red flag for me, uh, finding this out while I'm here. And you're hearing this across the board from everybody inside the Titans scene. Uh, they are not divulging any information about these guys. A.J. Brown, they say, has missed several practices in a row. He was nowhere to be seen uh, in terms of any kinds of real participation out here in these joint practices. He's had two knee surgeries since the end of the season. The, the weird thing is, everybody says the practices he's been out here, they said he's been by far the best player on the field and looks like the best version of himself they've ever seen. So that's good news. Uh, that's hard to reconcile. It makes you think that this is probably all just maintenance for A.J. Brown, but certainly something to be concerned about. That guy is not practicing very often, and nobody knows much about uh, his situation. And then Julio Jones, very similar, hasn't practiced in two weeks, tweaked an ankle a couple weeks ago. Uh, that's the other thing I should mention about A.J. Brown, is they did say he tweaked something in red zone a couple of weeks ago, but you know, from what everybody could tell, they said it didn't look like it was that that bad. But uh, anyways, back to Julio. Uh, Julio tweaked an ankle a couple weeks ago and hasn't been anywhere to see or heard of since, and the coaches aren't telling anybody about what his situation is. So, you know, the the insiders there tell me they think both guys are safe for week one, especially A.J. Brown. They're a little less certain about Julio Jones, but certainly this is a situation we need to monitor closely. And over at rosterwatch.com on the Ultimate Draft Cheat Sheet, we'll be making updates that takes all of this into account so that when you're drafting intuitively, you'll know exactly when it's time to look at taking a guy like A.J. Brown or Julio Jones uh, just the right spot based on all the inside intelligence we have out here from the rosterwatch.com uh, training camp tour. And that'll certainly be true for all the others that we've seen at Cowboys camp, Rams camp, Chargers camp, uh, Jaguars camp.
Uh, back to the Titans, I think the other thing that's very clear is there's still a run-first offense, no question about that. Uh, they run a slower pace of offense than the Bucks by far. It's, I don't see it being a high-volume offense. I think Ryan Tannehill uh, looks pretty solid. Uh, the depth behind Derrick Henry is abysmal. I mean, it's the Jeremy McNichol show, basically, uh, behind Derrick Henry. And the truth is you hear a lot about Marcus Johnson out here at the wide receiver three position, but it is a very thin wide receiver depth chart uh, behind Julio Jones and A.J. Brown, who are currently, you know, MIA. Josh Reynolds, I thought, looked good the last couple days, but I'm hearing he's having a lot of issues with his Achilles. That's making him kind of a day-to-day -day performer, a day-to-day -day player, and overall has been kind of underwhelming. And the same goes for the rookie, Des Fitzpatrick, uh, out of Louisville. Uh, same thing there. And then I guess the only other question would be Ferkser, who – I'm coming away thinking he's far more of a situational player, a key situational player for this team, but rather than an actual fixture of this offense, and I think we'll need to take that account. So uh, we'll be doing that over at rosterwatch.com. You guys can check everything out from the training camp tour and much, much more there, including the ultimate draft cheat sheet. It's one page of paper that contains everything we know at Roster Watch for the easiest draft, the best draft you've ever had. It's the only draft tool you'll need this season, the ultimate draft cheat sheet at rosterwatch.com. Until next time, Rosterwatch Nation, so long.